All right, today we're going to talk about making avatars with Adobe Fuse and Make Human. Uh, both of these are character creation tools, avatar builders. If you've ever built an avatar on a video game before, this is very similar. It's pretty plug and play. You pick the head you want, the pick the body you want, uh, the arm length, you know, if there's sunglasses, if there's pants, shoes, if they're naked, whatever. You know, you choose that stuff and uh, you export it and you have a character. But there are other softwares, but we're not going to uh, use these. You know, if you wanted to be a, a real hero, you could completely build a character custom with your DCC choice of software, you know, Maya, ZBrush, Blender, whatever, if you wanted to build them from scratch and you were comfortable with uh, polygon modeling. But we're just going to make the avatars with these plug and play tools. They're very friendly to uh, novice users. And I think they'll work for us really nicely today. So after we have those avatars, we're going to bring them into a piece of software on a website called Mixamo. Uh, Mixamo is now an Adobe product. And when we import our model into the software, it's going to ask us to identify a few different joint positions, and then it's going to do all these calculations and figure out the uh, underlying rig or skeleton to be able to make this character move. So when we talk about uh, skeletons, skeleton, uh, the bones, the joints, there's all sorts of different names for uh, these different things, depending on the software that you're using, I'll probably call them uh, joints and a skeleton. And just like our fleshy bodies connect to our, our muscles and our underlying bones, the same thing has to happen for a 3D character as well. Uh, the 3D character has its skin attached to its skeleton. Then whatever the skeleton does, uh, the skin comes along for the ride. This is quite a labor-intensive process to do manually. Um, doing it manually is obviously going to give you the highest fidelity and the most control, but uh, it's you know it's it's a little bit out of the scope for uh, for most of you. Uh, so you know I was wouldn't suggest it unless unless you have a character that absolutely requires it, and then in that case we'll have to come up with some solutions to help you along the way. Now, so here's an example of another sort of biped rig. You can see things are labeled uh, right arm, forearm, right arm. All this stuff attaches to a spine. The root joint would be the hips, and then all the legs attached to that. On the left here, you can see a hierarchy of these joints. Whatever the hips do, since it's the root joint, the spine comes along for the ride. And everything is attached to the spine, so the neck, which is attached to the head, all that stuff comes along. The arm is attached to the forearm, is attached to the hand, is attached to the fingers. You know, whatever the parent joint does, all the children do. <clears throat> all right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open up Fuse here. Very simple software. Uh, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but just to go over it again here. So we select a character and we're presented with these different options. We have heads to choose from, we have torsos, we have legs, we have arms. I'm just going to pick something. Pick this, uh, this guy right here. All right, this is his head. Let's give him a body. I'm just going to pick this body. This is your customization. So if you want to match different bodies that don't go together, by all means, go for it. I'm going to give him some zombie legs here. There's this asset's called a, a zombie. All right. We'll give him some zombie arms too. Why not? I'm just clicking on things. Very plug and play. Very what you see is what you get. Not be intimidated by this. 
If you left click and hold on to the space here, we can rotate this character around so you can see uh, what they look like. You can also zoom in and use traditional kind of 3D mouse button clicks. Uh, holding down right click on your mouse allows you to zoom in and out. Alternatively, you can use your mouse wheel. Left click allows you to uh, rotate the mesh and middle mouse button allows you to uh, pan around vertically or horizontal. So once you have all of these different body parts, the next step would be to uh, go up to the top here and go to customize. Click on customize and we can go into each individual body part and adjust them. Uh, make their belly bigger or smaller, the arm shorter or longer. I'm going to just go down the list here a little bit. Some of this is more dramatic than others. There we go. We want to adjust his belly. A really low belly or a really high belly. So we want to give him a little bit of a gut here. Do that. Make it more muscular by adjusting some of these parameters on the arms. So you have long fingers or short fingers. All that stuff you can change. If you don't like the sliders, you can actually hover over the body and grab over, uh, grab onto these different pieces. It's a little bit more interactive. It's up to you. You can also do this for the legs and the teeth, the torso, and the face. If I click on face, there's all these different types of expressions that I can choose from. Let me zoom in on his face. <laughs> yeah, let's make him a little angry. Angry and awkward. Oh, there we go. That looks good. <laughs> nice. All right, so after you're happy with the customization, Next stop up here is the clothing. So built into Fuse here, we have some options. Uh, if you go and explore the communities for the software, the forums, you can get more options. Uh, if you're really hardcore, you could design your own clothes to go on top of this. Though I have a feeling if you are designing your own clothes, you're probably designing your own meshes as well. Maybe not. If you are into designing clothes, really great piece of software called Marvelous Designer, the fabric simulator. It's for patterning with clothes. It does amazing physics and super realistic looking cloths for animation. Way outside the scope for us, just mentioning it. All right, let's give him a little crop top. Oh, that's a good look. Sure. And then let's give him some pants, some athletic pants. Here's some jeans. No, not a skirt. No, let's not make him too ridiculous. I'll change the shirt to dress shirt. There, that looks more respectable. Okay, shoes down here. Give him some shoes. Sure, tactical boots sound great. Give him a hat. Nah, he's a professional. Let's let's keep it professional. No hat. Maybe a little beard, a little soul patch. Eh. <laughs> sure, we give him a full beard. Or you know what? There's a sign of the times. Let's give him a surgical mask.
Yeah. There we go. All right. Now that we have this character finished in Fuse, we're going to send it over and get some animation uh, with the uh, Mixamo website. So in the top right here, you can click Save or Send to Mixamo. Go ahead and click that. It's going to ask you what you want to call it. Uh, I'll just call this uh, <laughs> Shirt Guy, I guess. Let it process. So Mixamo is a repository for a bunch of motion capture animation. Also has some character meshes on there as well. After that processes, it's going to start doing the auto rigging of the character. Now this auto rigging is not the end all be all of perfect character rigging. It's it's just gets the job done. But if you have a really complex character that requires a higher fidelity of rigging, or you have, I don't know, a character that has a tail or a crazy dress or something like that, it's, it's going to get messed up by this auto rigger because the algorithms just don't know to account for those things. And you're going to get weird things like stretching, in places that there shouldn't be stretching. Like this looks all right. There is some weird stretching in his stomach though. So we made it a little bit too big. Not that the stomach size is a problem. It's just a problem for the auto rigger because there's nothing, there's nothing in the auto rigger that says this is a big or small stomach. Uh, which is why we get this little pouch sort of look here. Otherwise, the fingers look good. Everything else looks good. This is good enough for now. Controls here, standard 3D controls, left mouse button to orbit around, middle mouse button pans, right mouse button zooms in and out. All that. If you're good with that, you can go ahead and click finish. Um, Mixmo will no longer save your characters, so it's one at a time sort of thing. You'll overwrite the previous ones. That's fine with me. You'll get this menu here. To download and animate. So the first thing we want to do is we want to download. We want to download the mesh itself in a T-Pose. It says download now in T-Pose right here. When we import into Unreal, we're going to import the mesh itself. And Unreal is going to create a skeleton for that mesh. And then we're going to import the animations themselves, the animations of the skeletons for uh, different animations, walking, jumping, running, swinging a golf club, you know, whatever your motion capture is that you choose in Mixmo. But we're going to import those animations without the skin, just as the skeletal animation data. So right now, go ahead and just click download and download it. Let that process. And then after this finishes, we're going to go ahead and choose some animation in Mixamo to bring over into Unreal. All right, process. It's going to ask us where to save it. It's going to save this. Why don't we create a new folder called Shirt Guy? Save it in there. Shirt Guy FBX. You could call this T pose or mesh or whatever if you want to be more organized. I'm going to call this underscore mesh. Just so I can know that there's there's no animation on this. It's just the mesh itself. Save that. All right. Now I'm going to click the animate button. You can see here it says you can use this with some gaming engines. Over here, 
says, here's your skeleton. You can now animate this stuff in a 3D software tool, the DCC of your choice, uh, Maya Blender, whatever. We're going to get some animation now. So click animate. It's going to take you right to the animation page with your character that we just made in a T-pose. You can scroll through all these different animations. There is tons and tons and tons of them. And if you have something more specific, you can type it in here. Let's see what we got. Is there any basketball ones? There is. There's basketball dribble. It's a little bit of a weird dribble. <laughs> I'm going to choose something else. I'm not just dancing. Oh, yeah. Let's do the Macarena. There we go. Nice. There's a little clipping through that stomach. So there are some settings, depending on which animation you pick, there are some settings to uh, adjust. Character arm space is one that will boost the arms out a little bit more if you have a lot of clipping problems, which that seems to help with the stomach. Let's dial this back a little bit, find the sweet spot. That's all right. And some of these other settings you can change. I think focus is doing something with, with his head, if he's looking up in the air or not. Uh, all, all the different animations have slightly different settings that you can play around with to have some custom control. But again, this is, this is just a motion capture library. It, it's not giving you a lot of custom result. That's good enough for now. I'm going to click download. You can also trim the animation if you wanted to here. That's stuff we can just do in Unreal. Overdrive speeds it up or slows it down. You can do that in Unreal as well. Download. All right, so these download settings, we already downloaded the mesh with the skin. So I just want the animation data for the skeleton. I want to do this without the skin. FBX, frames per second is fine. Key reduction is fine. Download. So when we upload this, we're going to import the mesh separately from any sort of animation. Save this out. Let's call this shirt guy. Arena. Save. What else do we want? We should have did the silly dance. Yeah, I think there's maybe some boxing ones that we can do. Taunting. Yeah, let's just do this boxing one. Cool. That looks pretty good. You see there's only a few settings here that we can change less than the, the dancing one. That's fine. Download. Again, without skin, we just want that animation. Just the animation skeleton. And if you imported these animation files into, say, Maya, there would be no mesh on them. It would just be the skeleton, and you would see it animated as you scrub the timeline. If you imported the original mesh, the first thing that we outputted from Mixamo, you would see the mesh, the model, in a T-pose, but no animation. So in Unreal, we combine those things together. Shirt guy. Let's call it boxing. Cool. All right, let's go over into Unreal. And create a new folder for this shirt guy. All right, import. Shirt guy folder, find it wherever you saved it to. All 
right, shirt guy mesh. That's the first thing we want to import. So click that. Settings up top. Take a look at those. This is a skeletal mesh. It has a skeleton. The alternative would be a static meshes, which don't have skeletons and usually don't have animation. Import the mesh. Yes, that's what we want to do. A skeleton. It has no skeleton right now. Unreal is going to make that, so leave it set to none. Everything else. Uh, import animations. Uncheck that. We don't want to import animations for this. Uh, material. Now search for the materials, import the textures. Let's give it a shot. Uh, sometimes if you mess up your naming conventions or put things in a bunch of different folders that the file doesn't know where it forgets where they're at, um, you can end up with a bunch of blank materials, which causes a lot of headache. So you have to end up doing it manually anyways. But when it works, it's really nice. So let's give it a shot. Import. This could take a while to do. Just be a minute. There we go. If you end up with any warnings here, it's worth taking a look at. These yellow ones get warnings more so than errors. The smoothie group error or that that's fine. If you end up with something talking about nitros and T0, when you import, there is a checkbox um, that checks you frame zero as the body pose. You can check a box and that error will disappear or you can ignore it. You see that I've imported all the textures as well. The time shaders down in the bottom right. That can take a while depending on the power of your computer. So we'll let this just process. Everything's color coded on Ruby based on the file type. So this magenta color is a static mesh. And what I did there besides the texture was the static mesh purple one there. This fixed asset. And then the other skeleton right here. This skeleton. The skeleton is what all of our animation is going to reference. So when we import our animations, we're going to have to help us do the skeleton. Otherwise, they won't be in the right file. If I double click on this and ask the, the measure, take us to the skeleton view where you can see the missing this. Not just these three. All right, so let's close this down and import some animations. So click on the invert. Go to uh, either of these. Let's just select both of them actually. The box being an Ocarina one. Notice the file sizes are all a lot lower. So the 10 megabyte one is the shirt guy mesh. The reason it's so big is because it actually has the mesh information all the polygons, and it has all those textures. There's a lot of textures for the shoes and the body and the shirts and everything else. That's why that file is so much heavier. And these animation files are they're just keyframes, basically. So they're really lightweight. They don't have any textures. They don't have any polygon information. It's just the skeleton. So when you import those, uh, it's Unreal is going to ask you, what skeleton uh, should these animations use? And a lot of times it finds it automatically, but sometimes you have to manually find it. So just be aware that uh, you should name things in a way that is useful to you. And just make sure you're using the right skeleton on your animations. Otherwise, uh, it's it's not going to... You're not going to get the animation where you want it. It's not going to work. All right, exported time. That's fine. Everything else is fine. Import all. All right. Uh, 
Those imported pretty fast. They're not very big animations. If you had motion capture that is, you know, 10,000 frames, so it's, it's going to be a much bigger file size. All right. So the animations in Unreal are this dark green color. If I click one of them, it's going to take us back to that a skeletal mesh viewer. This is called Persona in Unreal. That's just what this, this editor is called. And I have those four options up top. An animation section right here. I could go back to the mesh and look at the textures and edit them. If I go down to the bottom here, you can see all the animations that are attached to the skeleton in this mesh. Uh, this is very useful because we can do things like blending of animations, uh, which is really useful if you have you know, a character in a game, for instance, that you're blending between idle animations and walking and running and fighting and jumping and all this stuff. You want them all to be attached to the same skeleton. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's not going to flow as well. Um, even if you're doing just animation, like cinematic animation in Unreal, uh, it's, it's useful to have uh, your animations attached to the same skeletal mesh that, uh, that you will be using. There are ways to have it separate, and it's just a little less organized, unless, unless you're doing something where that it needs to be. You know, once you know how to do it, you can break it. All right, so this is animating. I can change the animation by clicking on the bottom down here. The guy looks a little weird though. It's like he's kind of transparent, right? This always happens when you're importing textures and making materials from Mixamo to Unreal. And I'll show you how to fix this. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt to do. Just go back to the mesh tab here. And here we can see our, our mesh in its T pose. And these are all the different materials that are making up our character. We're going to talk about materials in the future, uh, but materials, a combination of textures. You bring a bunch of textures together, uh, your, your base texture, which is the base color, uh, you combine it with a normal map, which gives you like the fake bump mapping. Um, you can combine it with other different channel maps like metal and specular and roughness. All those things come together to create a material. And then the material goes on the mesh and creates the graphics. So I'm going to click on, not sure which is what here. Which one is his? So you can isolate these things by clicking on them in Unreal. It just kind of helps you narrow down what's what. Looks like we have one for the eyes. We have one for the eyelashes. We have one for the body. I'm just going to click on this body one here and go into it. And what what we need to do is this node is usually tucked over here. Just just pull it out. We want to get the one that is attached to uh, opacity that's plugged into opacity there. Just pull it out so you can see it and, and grab onto the wire by holding down control on your keyboard and left on the mouse and drag it to opacity mask instead. Okay. We need to change that from opacity to opacity mask. And then we need to click on a big node here in the middle. Go over on the left here where it says blend mode translucent and we want to change that blend mode to masked so change the blend mode from translucent to masked and then go ahead and click save let it process Now we're going to have to do this to every single one of these. I'm just going to fast forward it here. Just duplicate the same thing that I did. Uh, you're going to switch opacity to opacity mask and change the blend mode on the big node from translucent to masked. 
and then click save. Uh, you can see the guy's skin already looks good. The mask and the shirt and the pants and the shoes, they all kind of still look weird because uh, we have to do the same thing to every single one of those. So just go down the list, click on the next one, do the same thing, save it, go back, see how it looks, click on the next one, etc. All right, I'm going to fast forward from here. All right, looks like he is done. Looking good. If we go back to the animation tab in the top, start playing these animations again. Looking good. So you can scrub through things here. You can also uh, trim things if you wanted to trim everything below before frame 10 here we could right click and go to um, remove frame from zero to nine remove everything after um, that sort of stuff to do trimming this is a fine animation though so i don't need to trim this you can also speed it up in the rate scale in the top left here speed it up or slow it down i'm happy with that click save get out of that Go back to the main menu here. Thing you should remember, it's always a good time to save. See all these asterisks on all of these files? That means that these are not saved. When you save, you should go to save all right here. Or you should go up to file, save all, or hit control shift S. That will actually bake everything that you imported into the file. Uh, so if you have a crash or something and you don't haven't saved all and those things have asterisks on them, you're going to have to re-import them all again, which is a big bummer. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's bring our animations in. So I can just drag them in. Move them around. See when you import animations in the bottom right here, you get some new details. So there's the animation that is playing in green there. Uh, below that, we have some controls for looping. If you want it to play when you click play, uh, you don't always want that. Maybe you want the animation to be triggered by some sort of event, whether that is a scripted code based event with blueprints or some sort of timeline based event with sequencer we'll talk about all those things initial position is where do you want the animation to start maybe you don't want it to start at zero that's that's up to you um, mesh is the mesh that it is using and then you have all the materials that that file is using as well you can edit all these things here as well as in the skeletal mesh editor all right, let me click play. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah. Looking good, fellas. Doing the thing. Cool. All right, so we made a character in Fuse. Designed it. We sent it to Mixmo using the send to Mixmo button. Uh, we downloaded it. It presented it with presented us with a, an option to download just the mesh in a T pose, which we did. And then we clicked the animate button, and we put some animation on it, and we downloaded all those. Uh, then we imported it into uh, Unreal. We imported the mesh first. It created a skeleton automatically. Then we imported those few animation files, the boxing and the macarena. Uh, we told those to use the skeleton that got created when we imported the mesh. And then and we had to fix the materials. 
and then we dragged them into our level and that was it and now we have some animation in here and whether you're taking animation from mixamo or doing it manually in maya or doing it with motion capture uh, this is the process whether it's people or something else all right cool thank you